Okay, so you just bought a brand new shiny mouthpiece, spent a bunch of money on it, and then you go to put it on your saxophone and it doesn't fit. It's too tight or it's too loose. What do you do? Well, actually, it's pretty easy to fix. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can sort that issue out in easy steps. <laughs> G'day, Nigel from Sax School. Well, today we're gonna to talk about how to fix that problem if you've got a neck and a mouthpiece that just won't fit together. Uh, this happens a lot. Either the mouthpiece is too tight or the cork is too loose, but uh, the good thing is it is really easy to fix. And to help me tell you how to fix this easy today, I've got my mate and master saxophone repairer, Steve Crow, with me. Steve's a great saxophone repairer. He's the guy that looks after all my saxophones in England. And if you're in England, he's the guy you need to talk to about saxophone repair. And in fact, you've replaced my neck cork a few times, Steve. Yes. And uh, you always make it look really, really easy. And actually, if it's properly damaged, I suppose you need to go to repair it, right? Yes, you do. But am I right in thinking there's a few things that you can do if you're in a practice situation or on a gig uh, that, that can get that yeah. issue sorted? Yeah. So let, let's say, let's say first of all that um, you have this issue. Like, this is a good example. So this is, isn't actually a new mouthpiece, but my neck cork is really loose here. Yep. Um, what what would you do in that situation? Well, there's a couple of things. Because um, I guess the cork can compress over time, right? Yeah, and it's usually if, if you've left the mouthpiece on in the case overnight or over a week or whatever time period that may be, take it off and it's very sloppy because you've not given the cork enough time to, to go back to its original thickness. Um, so there's a couple of things. Uh, some people use uh, PTFE tape wrap it round. So is that like plumber's tape? That's that thin white... White plumber's tape, yeah, that's right, oh, yeah. okay. Um, I've, in the past, just to get by, I've, I've just used insulation tape, um, just to take, just to give the cork a little bit more thickness. Hey, I've even seen on uh, on jazz gigs or big band gigs, particularly the old time guys do this, a bit of paper, tear a bit of paper off, wrap that around. Paper, yeah, if you, it's a bit difficult to keep the paper in, in, in place whilst you put the mouthpiece on, but if you can do that, paper's great. So PTFE tape is a good one too, because it really does fix it quite uh, permanently last year for a load of gigs. But what about, what can we do to actually revive the cork itself? Okay, put some boiling water into a cup and just immerse the cork for, for no more than two seconds. So one, two. Wow, so really not very long at all. No, and then if you just, Obviously, you, you want the water to... On to, your shirt. On your shirt, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and then try your mouthpiece. And now... Oh, wow, yeah, look yeah, at that. Wow. wow. Okay, so what happens... Oh, that's that's actually a huge difference and so easy. So what about if uh, if you do it too long? I mean, you said two seconds quite yeah. specifically. Yeah. Is it going to hurt if I put it in for too long? Oh, oh what will happen eventually, it, it, it'll affect the glue that's underneath the cork and the cork will come away from the crook. So the worst scenario, you're going to have to take it to a repairer to have it done anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, so two seconds, I mean, uh, you know, you've just seen the witness that that's uh, uh, yeah. long enough to, to, to do what it needs to do. Okay, that's brilliant. So a couple of quick fixes there. You could stick some PTFE tape or plumber's tape around it or some insulation tape. Yeah, insulation Or tape. even a piece of paper if you're really in a, in a tight spot. Or even better, if you've got a kettle and some hot water, two seconds in, and then dry it off on your sleeve, and then uh, put it together and yeah. it's job done. Okay, <laughs> awesome. So what about if it's the other problem, okay. where your cork is too big? Okay, well, we'll just look at this crook now, because this one is a little bit uh, fatter cork than, than the one that we've just been looking at. Uh, so I'm going to try and put this mouthpiece on. It does actually fit but it's tight straight away there. Let me just take this. This is the same mouthpiece with, we've used for this uh, crook here, uh, but this is a little bit tight on this crook, uh, on this new crook. I don't really want to take it any further because I'm a little bit frightened of splitting. Could that actually happen? Could you actually split the... Some of them, especially the Selmers, yeah. If it's a bit too tight, you can you can have a crack there. Wow, um, that's a good um, point. So you never ever want to really jam it on then? No, I would be very careful. Um, but... Um, what I would do here, um, I'm just going to take this back off again. Um, I've cut myself a piece of sandpaper. This is 120. Um, sandpaper comes in different grades, so 80, 100, 120, 240s. This is this is 120, and it's about right. The piece that I've cut off is about an inch by uh, 10 inch strip. Is that like wet and dry paper, or is it just normal yeah. sandpaper? This is wet and dry, but you can okay. just use normal sandpaper. It doesn't matter. Okay, but 120 um, grit, that sort of. Yeah, you want um, you want. A little bit, it's got to be coarse enough, but not too coarse. Okay. And then I'm going to use a, um, a technique called strapping. So basically, 
um, you want to put the this is if you're doing it by yourself if you it, some some repairers have a peg which holds the crook and they can actually strap it with both hands but like this yeah yeah you by yourself uh, or you're on a gig and you, it's just you or whatever and you can hold the paper um, with your thumb and with the other thumb and first finger just uh, move the sandpaper round and you can you can see where the dog is. Wow, you can see it's lifting off that cork straight away. Yeah. Okay, and you're just working your way around to keep it even and so it stays round. That's right. But what I'm doing is I'm actually taking off the back part first, rather, or the the, 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 the back of the cork instead of the front of the cork. Because the front of the cork is quite tight, but it's okay. And it's the back of the cork that's too fat. Yeah, so if I take off the back first, it's going to be tight at the front, which it is now, and we just want it to remain tight so it becomes a if we leave the cork as a taper when the mouthpiece goes on it will actually shove the cork up and you'll end up with a, a ridge uh, which we don't want because you can't get your mouthpiece any further yeah good point so anyway. basically the because the uh, the neck is is conical and correct, yeah. the cork is therefore going to be conical so you're trying to make the cork so it's parallel is that right yeah so the external part of the the, the uh, cork is is uh, parallel but the internal is is conical. Oh, I see. Well, and you, so you know, you've done this a thousand times, so I can see you're really confident with it. I bet I'd be worried about scratching my neck. So, if what what would I do in that situation? Easy. Oh, that stuff. So, um, uh, elect electrician's tape. That's right. Insulation uh, tape. If I can find the end. Uh, so yeah, this is insulation tape. So if if you're scared of um, uh, uh, the the sandpaper coming onto the lacquer on the crook, just wrap. Uh, insulation tape around the back, uh, and it, and the tape won't do any any damage to the lacquer. Um, that's enough, and then um, and then carry on. And if it does happen to go over, which I've just done there, it's not dis it's not uh, damaging the lacquer. Now that's the a top tip, and it, yes. I suppose insulation tape isn't going to like you said, it's not going to affect the lacquer even on an old horn. That's correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good um, top tip. Safety. So we're probably just about there now. I would say that um, I would probably put some grease on there now, some car grease. Yeah. But that feels quite nice. Wow, okay, that's a lot different to what it was before. Yeah. And that's pretty easy. And I reckon you could have a piece of this. Maybe these are things that you could actually have in your saxophone case with you, a strip of uh, 120 grit sandpaper, some electrician's tape, you know, really useful things to get you out of the spot. And a cup of boiling hot water. It's important to have one of those in your kit as well. Yeah. <laughs> but you might have one of those if you're in a gig situation, uh, or if you're you're out at a rehearsal room or something, where you can get your hands on some hot water. That's awesome. So that's you know that's so all of those things that you that we've talked about today are really easy to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they can make a massive difference to your playing because uh, you know it's something I hear from sax school students. Um, often is that they're confused about this issue, particularly if you spend a whole lot of money on a new, new mouthpiece, and they can be really expensive. And then you've got this issue where it's too loose or it's too tight, you know, you can't get the tuning right. Also, am I right in saying that if your mouthpiece is way too loose, your saxophone doesn't play right? That's correct, yeah, yeah. And, and, and also, if you, if you, when you're trying a mouthpiece uh, uh, for the first time, a new mouthpiece, or if you're trying a new instrument, um, if you can't marry the two together correctly and you can't get the mouthpiece to the correct position if the tube, if the mouthpiece is too far out the tube the intonation of the instrument is out uh, and, and playing the instrument in tune will be difficult so that's kind of an unfair test when you when you are trying a new instrument and if it's too far on you've got the same problem um, and um, if if it's not far enough, if the mouthpiece is not far enough on the crook, you actually get problems at the bottom as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point, actually. And, and the thing is, uh, you know, we all know that moving your mouthpiece in and out affects the intonation, but if it's way out, it doesn't just affect the overall tuning of the saxophone, but it actually affects the tuning within the range of the saxophone as well, that's, that's I think. Fine, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's really something to get um, to get right. And one final point on this, you'd, you'd agree with this, right? Cork grease, you really need to. Absolutely. Have, particularly if you've done yeah. some sanding like that, because you've got some raw cork there, you're going to have to stick cork grease on it probably more than once to um, make it work properly. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, I hope that's been helpful to you guys. If you're having a problem with your mouthpiece, in fact, let me know in the comments below this video whether you've had this issue. And also, if you've got any other tips of ways that you've fixed these sorts of problems that we've talked about before, I'd love to hear about that. And also, one other thing I'd like to know about in the comments is if you've got a specific 
uh, issue with regards to saxophone maintenance that next time I get Steve in the studio here, we can perhaps answer your questions. So if you've got something you need to know about with saxophone maintenance, let me know in a comment and we'll get back to you. If you want to find out more about Steve, check out the link in the com uh, below this video. Uh, Steve's a great repairer. He's done some uh, fantastic things with converting saxophones as well. And vintage saxophones, you're all specialists in vintage yeah. saxophones, aren't you? Yeah, cons and solos, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and if you want to find out more about Sax School, you can get a 30-day trial and join the thousands of other students around the world who use Sax School every single day to improve their playing. That's at www.mcgillmusic.com. I'll put a link below. And also, if it's your first time here, click subscribe because we are making new videos like this all the time and they're going to help you and that way you'll get notified when the next one comes out. So keep practicing hard and I'll catch you on the next video. Should we do that again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sort of trying to make him look neat so it yeah. looked like we were a bit nice, more nice. organised, you know. Yeah, because sometimes, it, and then so I don't see you doing this. <laughs> or that. Or like, <laughs> bloody hell, how long does yeah. it take? Right, okay. <laughs> like for the rest of the song. <laughs> like this. I don't know about one.